What is DevOps? In a room of 20 engineers, you will probably get 40 answers to this question. Is it technology? Is it tooling? Is it CICD? Is it Kubernetes? Right, what is DevOps exactly? In truth, DevOps has become kind of this answer is really there is no wrong answer, but to get specific, because that doesn't really help us learn it, we have to go back a little bit to where it started. So in 2009, most of the Flickr presentation that we were just talking about historically was about ideas and perspectives and processes. There weren't really specific technology patterns or usages in the presentation. It wasn't super prescriptive. There was, you know, shared version control was there, as were statements about automation and instant messaging. You know, think like IRC, for example, which is like old Slack, old Discord in 2022, right? But these were honorable mentions. They weren't really focused on the technologies. They weren't really even that focused on the processes. So what is DevOps if people and processes are the primary message? DevOps is a perspective that eliminates barriers between people, processes, and technologies so IT can deliver fast and compliant software to the customer. It's about eliminating the negative to get to the outcome, which is to basically deliver software. Questions like, should this be better? Right, those are common questions. Uh, and this is you know, common for DevOps for the purpose of evolution and improvement. So DevOps overcomes the barriers by embracing three perspectives. So when we're looking to remove these barriers, there's the three ways, namely, there's the way of flow, the way of feedback, and the way of continual improvement. Now you're gonna see a lot more of these concepts in later chapters, but before we get into the patterns and concepts that comprise the DevOps perspective, let's talk a little bit about what DevOps is not. It is hard to define a thing by what it is not because then that requires us to define all the other things in the universe other than the thing. But here are some common fallacies about DevOps that should be explored before we dive into those foundations. First, DevOps is not just about technology. Technology comes at the end of a dev DevOps mindset, not at the beginning. And what good is the best technology in the world if you don't have the right processes and people to support it, implement it, etc.? Second, DevOps is not a job title. So creating collusion among people doesn't happen just because you are titled a DevOps engineer. By the way, nor does having a container orchestrator solve all of your interaction trust or observability problems. So not a title. Lastly, DevOps is not a complete end-to-end -end kind of organizational software development framework. It has all the components, but it's not a framework in and of itself that you can run from end to end to teach you how to put organizations together. DevOps as a framework is really just a supplement that says that we can deliver better, faster, and more secure to the business if we continue to experiment and improve but it mainly is focused around the core roles that are involved in software delivery. And that does include some analysis of planning and whatnot, but it's not the whole end to end. And it certainly doesn't scale to say like an entire organization per se without a larger framework like Agile or scaled Agile framework. So let's add a trusted source about DevOps teams and organizations now that we've talked about three common fallacies related to DevOps. We're gonna visit a website called devopstopologies.com. And this website shows some common anti-patterns that you find in how organizations kind of set up their teams. And so the first anti-type, as you can see here, is the dev and ops silo. And you've got dev and operations, developers operations on separate teams. There's no real close collusion or connection with them. And so, you know, developers are just kind of throwing things over the wall at operations. Operations is struggling to understand and, and run them in production. And there's no kind of connection or feedback loops there. So that's the first kind of anti-type. The second anti-type is where you organize your teams, where you have developers in a team, you have operations in a team, and then you have a DevOps team. And that team's job is to somehow kind of put all that together. And that team quickly gets stressed trying to understand the conflicting and plus the third party. And so the whole thing just becomes incredibly complicated. And so this is also an anti-pattern for your DevOps teams. The third is anti-type C, where devs don't need operations. So they basically take DevOps and they stick it inside a developer organization. The problem with that is that no matter how smart someone is, operations has very different concerns than development does. And so 
while you can embrace that to a certain degree without actually including operations, you're not going to attend to operational challenges. And you've still got this silo, this split in the organization. Anti-type D DevOps as a tools team, you know, that could work, but you still haven't included operations. Operations is still with their own separate concerns and you're not really working with them or colluding with them to capture what their concerns are and allow them in a way to help you speed your delivery into production. Anti-type E is very similar to the last anti-type that we're gonna see, which is basically that we took a bunch of sysadmins, we didn't teach them about collaboration and automation and collusion and all the stuff that you're about to learn, and we just rebranded them as sysadmins. That obviously doesn't work because you've got this old sysadmin mindset, kind of I own it, you know, I'm not really involved in the software development process, and you've got this kind of wall where you've moved DevOps into operations, but you really haven't created collusion or connection between your teams. Anti-type F is our one of our last few, which basically is where you're, you take everything and you just embed it inside of a development organization. Problem with that is that development organizations are run by development managers, so their concerns are mainly to deliver software, not necessarily to maintain, patch, secure, keep up software. Now, could it grow in that way? Sure, if both the operations and the DevOps concepts and all that just kind of grow and encompass the entire organization, it could evolve into that. But if developers are in charge, it's not a great thing. If operations is in charge, it's not a great thing. Getting the teams to collude together, that's what we're looking for. Obviously that extends over to this next anti-type, anti-type G, where basically you've got you know database administrators embedded in operations. Again, just more silos, more walls, right? This is not, this is not helpful, right? And then at last, you've got one that has arisen over the last 10 years, is you've got fake SREs. So you've got site reliability engineers who are not trained, they're like old sysadmins who haven't been trained in cyber reliability practices. They haven't done any of the training or any of the work exercises or really just embraced SRE as a discipline. And much like not embracing DevOps, it just doesn't work. You've basically just rebranded your operations team as SREs, but you haven't changed them. You haven't changed anything. So keep this in your back pocket has something to look at when you're thinking about how your organization is structured or if you're an influencer around organizational structure keep this in your back pocket for when you're doing that analysis because this can give you some ideas of what not to do and there's also another page that says what to do but we wanted to show you some anti-patterns how does devops relate to frameworks that you might hear about like lean or agile or scaled agile framework or itil sres others like how does it relate to that the simple answer is that except for a lean, almost all other of the frameworks either touch on part of the DevOps thinking process or some like the agile flavors embrace and encompass DevOps thinking and processes completely like they pull them into the core. Lean is a core part of DevOps, emphasizing customer centric value with minimal resources, mainly in small batches. And there's a big emphasis on customer feedback at every iteration of every batch. So as you can see, lean is kind of in DevOps. Safe or scaled agile framework, for example, incorporates DevOps into its software delivery methodology. So when it talks about how to provide like, you know, core delivery where you align strategy to tactics across an entire organization, one of its cores is about value streams, right? And part of that also is, you know, the core around DevOps. Now, ITIL is interesting because ITIL has no references to DevOps, yet it defines key areas that are related to DevOps, like, you know, service delivery and service operations and server maintenance. And those kind of things actually have to be, those processes have to be put into DevOps to kind of see the flow and do quality improvement that DevOps asks for. 